Beijing, China's capital and its cultural nerve center, a modern metropolis with traditional roots. And now it becomes the first city in the world to host both summer and winter Olympics. After 14 years, the biggest sporting extravaganza returns to Beijing. Thousands of athletes from around the globe will compete in over 100 events at three zones. Cheered on by over 1.4 billion Chinese citizens and millions abroad, CGTN will bring you a ringside view of the historic event. 2022 Beijing Olympics, the games that matter on CGTN. See the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to join us at CDT and live and the special Serial Winter Games Express. And we are now actually doing this live stream on this special 
studio on the bullet train incorporated with 5G technology. And we are now heading from Zhang Jiakou, one of the competition zones of the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics and to Beijing, the host city of the Olympic Games. And uh, this is Jessica with CDTN and together with me is Nadim. Nadim. Good morning, everyone. This is Nadim, as Jessica said, and today we're going a little bit off script. Um, Winter Olympics is still going to be our main theme, but instead of talking about sports, we're going to be talking about sportsmanship and friendship during the competition and discuss some of our feel-good moments that we've seen or heard in the past couple of weeks during the Beijing 2022. And with us on the moving studio today, we have two special guests. We have Annie and Eve. Could you please introduce yourselves? My pleasure. So usually in France, we say ladies first. So would you like <laughs> to start maybe? Well, all right. Um, hi guys, uh, my name is Tambo Hu Annie, but everyone just calls me Xiao Hu, uh, Little Tiger. And I'm from the United States. I'm a singer uh, that grew up in Beijing. Yeah, I work nice. here. So, me, uh, I am Yves. My uh, Chinese name is Mo Yan. I'm a French host for, I'm working for the CGT and French channel. It's a real pleasure to be here today with you guys and you, the public. Thank you. Thank you, you so much for joining us. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to fire away. <laughs> <laughs> so have you guys been watching the games? Pishura, of course we have. Okay. What about you, Annie? Um, some? Okay. Yeah. Is there anything that stood out for you guys like a sport that you've been following or that you liked before the Olympics and you decided to watch it or uh, to be honest, I was uh, really following a French athlete mm -hmm. which name is Tess Le Deux, and okay. she's a uh, World specialist into a competition which is big air. Big air. Yeah. And I think it's so dangerous, so amazing that I wanted to follow this because I had no idea before what, what this sport is all about. And I have to say, I was very impressed by her performance. And later we're going to speak about it because <laughs> well done, Gu Ailin. You did it. Yes. <laughs> so, how about Annie? What about you, Annie? Anything that um, stood out? Yeah, I really enjoy watching Wang Meng, this mm -hmm. kind of speed skating. And I also love figure skating. Okay. That's always been a passion of mine. Yeah. Figure it's skating beautiful. is nice. Like, I mean, yeah. it's. It is a sport, but at the same time, it's a form of art. Like yes. when you're yes. watching them, like dancing inside the ice rink. I, I, I like even yeah. for someone like me who's not really big on sports, uh -huh. I still enjoy watching the show. The show, yeah, this, yeah. yeah the yeah. showmanship. So, uh, Annie mentioned Wang Meng. Have you ever? watched the commentary events of Wang Meng. Yes, I love watching them. <laughs> they are currently my favorite source of entertainment because I think she just has a great personality. Yes. And um, I really like that, uh, I can't say jie in Chinese. Jie. It's a kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's oh, a kind yeah. of the way that she it's talks. Fine. It's like yeah. a yes. kind of power. And um, it, yeah, I yeah. just really enjoy watching her. Is she the one who did this commentary? She's from Tongbei, right, as I remember? She's from northeastern part of China. Her For those who don't uh. know Wang Meng, I, I should give you a yes, short yes. intro. Yeah. 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 <laughs> give us context. <laughs> so, so uh, basically, introduction of Wang Meng. Well, she is a former short track uh, speed skater for Team China. And recently, Wang Meng is so popular, so trending on Chinese social media because of her commentary. Like very colorful commentary. Uh, yes. Humorous and uh, with Wang Meng style. Yeah. And, uh, and also, she is from northeastern part of China with the with accent. The accent. Yes. Yes. <laughs> with the accent. And a lot of people love her commentary. Uh, I think one line that is really popular this day is is like <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like my eyes are rulers, my eyes are like rulers. That line comes from when they are waiting for the result of Team China, I think it's for the relay, mixed relay of 2000 meters short track speed. When they are waiting for the results of the camera to catch who is the winner. Mm. And Wang Meng said, Chi Team China is the winner. Oh, so she called it before. Yes, before wow. the camera, oh, before wow. the technology. Okay. And she, she said that my eyes are the rulers. So that makes her yeah. outstanding these days on mm. social media platforms. Okay. Yeah. And I have a little story about her commentaries because myself, I have a, a daughter and we were watching the competition when Wang Zewei uh -huh. won uh, sk skating. Zhang Zewei. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my goodness. Zhang Zewei, when he won the competition, she was always saying, oh, run away, Jai, oh, run away. <laughs> and my little daughter, who is only four, uh -huh. nowadays, every time we're gonna uh, uh, ice skating, she's always calling me now, 
runs away, runs away, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> so because of her. So yeah, indeed very funny. Exactly. And inspiring younger generations. Yes. yes. yes indeed. Exactly. So about like yesterday for, actually today is like 18th, right? Yeah. For yesterday events, have you today's, ever followed? Yeah, today's day 14. It's been yeah. Yeah, two weeks, yesterday day 13. I, like, uh, yeah, we said we're not going to talk about sports, <laughs> but we will. Um, Brief oh, well, just highlights. Just very, very yeah. briefly, highlights. Uh, yeah, I, I did. One thing that I really wanted to share is the women's ice hockey. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the final. Canadian team won. Congratulations, Team Canada! It was against the U.S. Um, <laughs> but what I what I like <laughs> what I like <laughs> is that they called it a redemption because four years ago at Pyeongchang it was the U.S. team who yes. won. Yeah. And since 1998, the year when the women's ice hockey was included in the Winter Olympics, it's only been either the U.S. or the Canadian team wow. winning the gold. So mm -hmm. it's literally been just them and the Canadian won yesterday. So Ooh. That's good. Hopefully next time there will be some other <laughs> in choices. Four years. Back, to, back to the USA. <laughs> uh, okay. another, what about you? Yeah, What's your another, highlight from yesterday? Another highlight for me, that would be three Chinese female athletes uh, in s freestyle skiing of the half pipe okay. were qualified to the final. And uh, namely, they are Guai Ling, yeah, Guai Ling, Zhang Kexing, and Li Fanghui. And uh, the final competition for the freestyle ski of the half pipe, I think, is happening right now. Yes, wow. happening Ooh. right now, starting from 9.30. Okay, so hopefully, ago, yeah. by the end of the live, of today's live, we will get uh, another medal, a gold medal, a super medal, a bronze medal. We will yeah. let you know. Yeah, we will mm -hmm. let you know. Um, okay, well... We move on to speak about other sports. Yeah, the topic cool. of, yeah. Uh, other sports <coughs> from Yanqing Zone. We have um, our reporter, CGTN reporter Feng Yilei. She is there reporting since the beginning from Yanqing Lake. Do we have her online? Yeah, Nadine. Hello. Hello, <laughs> Yilei. Hello. Hi. Welcome today on our show. Thank you. Oh, um, you I guys wanted... have talked to talk much about yeah sports in Beijing, but I'm pretty sure that events in Yanchen, including alpine skiing and uh, yeah sliding sports, are more sort of uh, niche sports, especially for Chinese audience. So uh, yeah. So can you tell us what's been happening at Yanqing Lake in the past couple of days? Of course, uh, I think um, what has received most of the attention here in Yanqing. Uh, yesterday is, of course, the women's alpine combined racing, and that is also the final individual ev event of uh, alpine skiing. And uh, uh, as you may uh, have heard, um, Michelle Gibson has defended her Olympic title and followed by her teammate and it Italy's uh, Frederica Brignoni. And that helps Switzerland make a record of five gold medals in the alpine skiing at a single Olympics. And this um, defending champion actually uh, was only in the 12th place before going into the afternoon slalom run and uh, uh, he, she told us that the secret to her success was a glass of wine with her compatriot one day before and some advice from her <laughs> men's giant slalom champion of her team on how to ski on the Yanshin course which is uh, kind of different from uh, what they have back in Europe and both seem to have worked very well as she did make a perfect one in slalom but at the same time I should say um, the much anticipated skiing superstar one of the strongest medal favorites Michaela Schaefer of Team USA maybe was pushed too hard failed to finish once again even in her favorite discipline and that is uh, the third time in the games to see her names come with it did not finish and that means she has competed in every individual event, but leaving without a medal from any and uh, with a best showing of only the ninth place. And that is way below all the huge expectations for her. Uh, and we managed to talk to actually some of her teammates uh, after the race yesterday. And uh, some said, well, it can be incredibly difficult for anyone, of course, including Shifrin as a person. And they think uh, even a skiing, being a skiing icon like her, uh, is allowed to have DNFs because that is what skiing races is like. And um, uh, the, the medal winners have also uh, expressed their sympathy for the struggling shivering. And uh, 
Michaela herself openly spoke out for the amusement, saying that she's questioning a lot and being really disappointed and frustrated. But you know what has impressed me me most is that she said she should probably just quit in the, the coming events, but she is actually going to go out and ski some team event today and practice the coming team event. Uh, so I guess maybe that's what Olympic spirit is all about. Yeah, I, I think uh, I read the news about Schifrin and there has been a lot of talk about her performance and how there were a lot of high expectations and um, there was criticism at her performance, which what I enjoyed the most was that she came out and she defended herself and she's in the right mind frame saying that I will keep trying and I've done yeah. my best and I think this is this is really what matters and the fact that she's still willing to go back after falling and keep doing what she's doing i think this is really commendable yeah when ask when, when we ask her and her teammates uh, whether she will consider come back to what is the, the so-called ice river course of the yanchin alpine resort and the answer is a definite yes yeah, I mean, that's 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 the mm -hmm. spirit. Um, I have another question for you. So today's theme of our live stream is sportsmanship and the human mm -hmm. side of athletes, because we look at athletes sometimes are like these lean, mean performing machines, and we forget that they're just humans <laughs> like us. <laughs> yeah. So have you having interviewed so many athletes during your coverage from the Yenching Zone, do you have any behind the scenes stories that you could share with us about uh, something that the camera didn't pick up or like something that has happened off camera, something that really like established the connection between you as a journalist and them as an athlete. Yes, of course, I have quite a lot to tell you, Nadine, because for me, this is also my first Olympics. And I really, um, as you just said, uh, it really allows me to find out more behind the screen. And uh, uh, I'm really touched by how athletes actually enjoy the sport and uh, how they focus on the process of outdoing themselves and for some their determination to promote the sports they love instead of simply chasing for the medal or the podium so for example an alpine skiing again we know that china is a late starter in this olympic discipline and it is the first time for the chinese athletes to actually attend all the events uh, so honestly they are not i should say as highly anticipated as those of, for example, mm. short track speed skating. But they have actually, they, they've been keeping making history throughout the game. So yesterday, Kong Fan Ying of the women's uh, Alpine team uh, became the first Chinese skier that has That's completed true, yeah. all individual events. And uh, uh, she really showed her courage and endurance after so many athletes skied out uh, on the course. And she told us that she felt doing her best is already the biggest self-improvement so that these four years of hard work would not be in vain and that younger athletes of her team uh, can be inspired to do better in the future. And likewise, her teammates, um, Zhang Yaomi and Xu Mingfu also made breakthrough by finishing the men's speed events for the first time in history. And uh, they both have made breakthrough and uh, uh, they say they are going to strive for uh, the better performance and John frankly told us that uh, many friends and fans actually ask him to just just get down safely and that is all but she said for him it's, it's just different because he's an athlete and uh, doing her best means a lot to the future uh, to um, the alpine skiing and Chinese alpine skiers so uh, he just well try to do his best and both him and uh, streaming food they, they said they won't be afraid of making any mistakes and it's just the same for sliding sports. Uh, even Chinese athletes has, have already uh, presented a groundbreaking performance. Yes. Uh, but Yang Wengang, yeah, who won, uh, uh, won and the, so far the first bronze in men's skeleton, he said he just tried to focus on the race uh, in his fourth run. And also Ying Zhen, who came, I think, fifth in uh, the games, um, who is believed by many that he's of great potential he said he won't care much about the result but well just want to be faster mm -hmm. and uh, also at the same time women's writers Zhao Dan and uh, Li Yuxi uh, they uh, also you know skeleton writers they they have just made their debut at the Winter Olympics and they just try to um, tell the general public that skeleton is not as dangerous as difficult 
as many people may think. And they hope that more people can get to like the sport and even try to do do it themselves. In the, yeah, and right. they are all, I should say, yeah, precious memories. Thank, thank you, Ilay, for this summary of um, the <laughs> aspects that you've spoken to and the, the, the events. And I do have to agree that a lot of people are now watching the Winter Olympics and I think by watching it, they will grow interest in these sports. I know I've done so. Um, so thank you again so much. And we'll be looking out for more stories from the ground from you. Thank you again. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you, Yile, so much. I think the magic of this live stream, this series of the Winter, uh, Winter Games Express for CGTN is that for every episode, we will invite guests, mm -hmm. whether inside this special studio or we have our guests online, like our colleagues inside the closed loop, inside the bubble, and share uh, with us their predictions, their ideas towards the Beijing Olympics. And for this episode, we have uh, two special guests, Annie and Yves, joining us in this special studio and discussing about today's theme, right? So personally, I would really like to know that uh, how long have you been in China and uh, uh, for instance, like why you're here and what kept you here for so long? <laughs> Still ladies first? Yeah, of okay. course. <laughs> All right. Um, so I've been here for 22 years. Um, originally, of course, I came with my parents. I was very young at the time. Um, but. Uh, after living here all the way up to I turned 18, of course, I had already gone through a lot. You know, I'd gone through like puberty, you have your first experiences. So basically, my entire youth had bonded with this country. I didn't have any other memories. So I don't know how to really explain it. There's just, at the time, there was no way I could have left because it was all I knew and all I connected with. And I really felt like I belonged here and I felt like I was actually from this country for a long time Ooh. because it was my home, you know. Um, yeah, that's that was the question, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, so my story with China began even before I was born. Wow. <laughs> wow, a long because story. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to be a long story? <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going like to touch you okay. to make it really <laughs> fast, I promise. Uh -huh. my, my mom is from Poland, from Warsaw. And uh, before, like, she, she was uh, just working on the streets. Like it was in 1976, and on the street she met uh, a, a Chinese woman, Ooh. and uh, she helped her. In like, Poland. In, in Poland, uh -huh. she was a, a tourist, and uh, she was just visiting uh, Poland in Warsaw. And at that time, when they met, they became very good and close friends. Ooh. And the funny part is, like, uh, I think seven years after that. And the, the, this Chinese woman, she come, she came in France when I was around five years old. She knocked at our door without telling my mom that she was coming. She only had the French address from my mom, oh, and she tried. So it was a surprise Ooh. visit. Totally yeah. surprise visit. And she stayed with us like for one week. Okay. And I still remember when I was five, like oh my goodness, such a beautiful, such a clever, such a talented Chinese lady. Mm -hmm. It really did a impressed me a lot when I was a kid. And I think that's why I still feel this really deep connection with China. Mm -hmm. So what... But you still haven't answered the yes, question. Yes, what <laughs> kept you here? I was, so, okay, so we knew what got you here. That's, yes, also what kept me here, yeah. I would say, since I got this uh, special link with China, mm -hmm. I, 20 years after this first experience, I met some other Chinese uh, from Wuhan and from Xi'an. They were French and they, and um, we were living together in Paris in our apartments. And then they told me, hey, would you, maybe you could try to go in China. I'm sure you will love it. I st uh, so I, I tried to, to make it to China. I'm very accomplished and very happy here with my life. And why I'm still here is because I have a Chinese wife yeah. and I have a Chinese family. So the answer to the entire question is, <laughs> yes. is Chinese women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why I came, exactly. why I stayed home. <laughs> beautiful Chinese women. And okay. you summarized it so I know. Yeah. Like, I wow, mean, that was it. like half a second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I really, uh, yes, this is the topic that we are going to talk about is that uh, the Chinese friendship. <laughs> a little bit later, okay? Uh, off, uh, off the live. So uh, about the friendship between different uh, cultural backgrounds. Yeah. Yes, this is the, I think this is the most important theme of today and also 
what makes people together for this kind of big event, the sports event, right? So I know that three of you guys, uh, not me not included, <laughs> me included as well, are fluent in Chinese. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 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 Are you fluent yeah. in Chinese, right? So uh, to a certain extent, yes. yeah. To a certain extent, and Nadim has been learning French, uh, sorry, Chinese for quite a long time as well. So, do you guys think that Chinese, the language itself, will help you to understand the culture and would help you to make more friends of? Uh, in, in the country. Oh, that is for sure. If I may answer first, maybe I don't know. You know, when you are, I know some foreigners who are in China for 25 years and they don't speak a word of Chinese. And these guys, their biggest problem is they don't try to stay with the local. They don't even understand the local. They still have their, let's say, um, country mind. They mm -hmm. cannot adapt to China very well. So I think if you're able to speak at least a basic Chinese, you will be able to take out your filter and you will be equipped with a new exactly like a pair of eyes. Like yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's very important to speak the mm -hmm. language. And not even for that, but for your everyday life. Yeah. If you want to do anything in China, if you don't speak Chinese, to be honest, that's going to be very hard. Yes. Mm. How about Annie? Um, absolutely, I agree with him. I don't really understand how anyone could choose to remain in China for so long and not learn the language because I feel like without having learned the language, you would miss so much. It'd be like you're living a half-life. Mm -hmm. It'd be like yeah. if you were, for example, in love with someone or had a family with someone and you never actually talked to them. So everything was just surface. Y you would never have such a deep, profound connection. experience and connection. Yeah. And you would just, you wouldn't enjoy your life as much. It just, I, I, I believe that learning the language of whatever country you plan on staying in will enrich your life too. And, Wow, exactly. extent, you know, yes. just it is part of the immersive experience. Yes. I mean, you said something earlier that you felt like you belonged in China. Yeah. And this really struck a chord with me because that's how I feel mm -hmm. as well. And I think it has to do also, you know, that sense of belonging is because I understand the country a lot more thanks to the language. The language. Yeah. Because when you understand the language, you understand the culture behind the language, yes. you understand the people more. Yes. And I think that that's... that's like and at the same pressure. time, you will feel Precious. happier because if you don't have the tool to live in a country, whatever the country is, yeah. you won't have a happy life. It's impossible yeah. to have a decent life, a normal life, because you will be dependable of someone. You will depend of, on someone mm -hmm. to help you in your everyday life. And I don't think it's uh, such a good life. Yes. I do want to add one little thing if we have time, though. Yeah, the course. great thing about Chinese, though, like, I'm not sure about other foreign languages because I haven't spent a lot of time trying to study, for example, French. Or, you know, <laughs> it's but, hard. But for <laughs> Chinese, because it's not a, you know, uh, Latin-based uh, language and it's, you know, characters and everything. One other great thing about it is the longer you study it, the more interesting it gets. So you could be here for 20 something years and technically you're fluent, but you would still have things that surprise you every day, mm -hmm. especially with yes. like the poetry or what I work with, yes. lyrics, yes. stuff like this. So yeah. every day you're going to come across a new character or a new word that's going to bring you this surprise. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, yes. it's, it's like every day you just get these surprises, surprises, excitement, excitement. Yes. So yeah. You, yeah, I think the language Chinese is special. <laughs> exactly, I agree. Uh, languages but are. But you're biased as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not to my country and my language <laughs> the best. <laughs> but languages are oh. not just a tools, <clears throat> but by learning the language itself, we can get to know more about the culture. Yeah. Yes. Right? We can know the culture behind it, whether French, I speak a little bit French, and I say uh -huh, I'm <laughs> you do. a little bit. Yeah, and uh, English and uh, Chinese. I think there are like like different uh, philosophies behind every language and also the words the expressions like Nadim had told me before that the characters yes and represent things as well yeah I mean you already know this but like one of my favorite <laughs> characters in Chinese is Fen Shou um, and not just because I use it not just because why? it's been used a lot on me like okay but, fine but no because Fen Shou is like separate hands I and know. so yes, there's like it's yes. so romantic when when you think of it and mm. this is like the characters that you were talking about Annie is like there's a backstory to these characters so like yes. one of my favorite Chinese characters would be Hao because you have ah, a woman and a uh -huh, uh -huh. So you have a son and woman, which is a planet, it's a perfection of life. Oh. So whether, and another little story I would like to share with you, if, it's, if we still have time, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. 
You know why I decided to learn Chinese as well? Because before when I was, I was uh, teaching at a university and on the wall you had a lot of graffitis and these graffitis, most of them were Chinese characters. Mm -hmm. And I was always like, what is it? What are they saying? Oh my goodness. And the first time I started to really understand Chinese characters, I had exactly the same impression as the first time I was swimming into the water. It was like entering a totally new vision, a new world. Mm -hmm. And 10 years later, I came back to this university after knowing Chinese. And the funny thing is... Just to read the graffiti? Exactly. <laughs> they were still there. And I remember, oh, they were selling some cigarettes out there oh, and I was like oh my goodness so that was it you spent 10 years learning Chinese just to, yeah. to realize that it was about cigarettes yeah. exactly <clears throat> hmm. Annie okay. I have a question for you okay. <laughs> unrelated to cigarettes oh. but related to Chinese <laughs> okay. um, your Chinese name uh, you mentioned is Tang Bo Hu yeah mm. um, I, I botched the tones it's I'm okay sorry. <laughs> um, so it, it's an interesting name because it's the name of a historical figure yes can you tell us more about this? Um, yes. Okay. So he was uh, Tambo, who is from the, I believe, the Ming Dynasty. Ming Dynasty. Yeah. And um, he was a poet and uh, an artist, actually, painted as well. Uh, they call him the, I forgot the something scholar, but basically he was a scholar. Um, uh, at the time, he took an exam, which was very difficult to pass, and he, I believe he passed the first round. Um, and his actual true story is not, it's not particularly happy, but I chose this name because it's a very inspirational story. It's like many of the very uh, famous or shall we say historical, like really um, important figures in history. Their lives were not necessarily easy, mm. but they stuck with what they felt was, you know, the, their true yes. art. Mm -hmm. They stuck with it to the end and then they went down in history. Um, so. The main reason I keep his name is not because he's an artist or a poet, but because um, I feel it inspires me every day to stick with what I believe in and what I am doing. For example, like music. Uh, okay, so maybe some people will laugh at me or think I'm... Earlier you asked me a question, do people ever say bad things about you or whatever? And I just try to remember, like Tang Bo, who uh -huh. we are going to keep going and yeah. we're going to fight till the absolute end. And even if in the very end, no one recognizes our talent or our hard work, it's okay because it will be worth it one day. Um, and it's also contributing to the culture. Yeah, so now wow. he's Jiang Nan Si He's very famous for being one of the most, you know, talented, talented uh, geniuses yeah. of Jiang Nan. Yeah. Yeah, so, since yeah. Annie. Since you mentioned, mentioned art and the talent. The art and talent <laughs> and the music. Would you like to, uh, how does I present a short sing for us? Part. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yes. There's no music and tunnel sound. Okay. Yeah. This is. I just want to say it's really early in the morning. I never sing early in the morning. It's bad for your <coughs> vocal cords. But um, okay, I'll sing a little bit. I'm gonna yeah. try. If it sounds terrible, just no, 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 no. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's gonna sound awesome. Okay. Ming Yue Wan 公子王孙何必问许多我青春？Okay. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I like See, the. I, I had to remove my earpiece to listen <laughs> intently. Too loud. No, to listen intently. No. Uh -huh. I like the the chang chang the the style the tones of Anis songs. And the, the 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 very the Chinese uh, like the very. Peking opera or like Chinese yeah. opera style? Uh, is that what a it little, is? It has a little bit of an operatic sort of influence, uh, like a Chinese opera influence, but actually it's more, we call this Mingge Chang. So it's ah. a lot more of like the nasal tone. It's my own sort of creation. Wow. Um, so yeah. I have a question. Can like normal people succeed to sing like that, even if you don't <laughs> especially have uh, any kind of talent like, like, like myself? Can I one day, if I train very hard, sing like you? Um, well, I don't think I'm really something that one should be, you know, striving to get to because I'm also self-taught and I just practice a lot. And I think that if you commit to something, you can do anything. I believe that's the philosophy I, of I humanity. Vote, I is vote like, for that. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to ask, so as a singer, 
why did you decide to go down that line and like sing something that is more evocative of like traditional Chinese? Um, yeah. Well, like I said, I grew up here, so what I you know listened to and was familiar with, I think it's also uh, because it's so unique to China, like uh, the Chinese opera and um, the certain style of singing. It's very unique to China. Also, um, one thing that I love about Chinese music is something. It's something we call yunwei, or like uh -huh. it's a it's a kind of like strong and soft. It's in the language you can see traces of it, but and including the way, for example, Chinese women traditional like uh, uh, ancient sort of style mm -hmm. dress. There, it's not all beautiful or all very colorful. It's everything in China is like a sort of. Uh, it's a yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, exactly. it's a balance. Yeah. And in Chinese music, I love this like, it's a it's a strong and a soft. And this is one thing that I yeah, what I love about it. But the main reason that I sing this style, uh, one of the main reasons, is also because my voice is called xiao xiao sang zi. Uh, I have wow. a very light, uh, light voice, very quiet voice, mm -hmm. small voice. Uh, so uh, it's perfect, actually. I think it was just fate. <laughs> but do you also mix that with something modern, let's say music or lyrics or... Oh, yes. We do this all the time now. I think uh, even in this, we call this guofeng, so it's like yeah. traditional style, but it's actually fusion. It's It will be like pop or uh, rock maybe, and we fuse it together with what I said, yunwei. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the sound of your voice, but it could be some of the instruments or the... Uh, the melody of the song that has some Chinese influences and it's actually very uh, yeah it's very obvious like if you hear a piece of music like this you can immediately recognize that it's uh, this Chinese style but yes we fuse it together all the time and in a lot of the music that I do of course I use uh, some pop influences and also um, most commonly I use Yin, like the the the, the I don't know how to say this so like the shift ah. This thing, change this, the tone. this okay. would be yeah. more R and B style. But in in Chinese opera, we also have this kind of thing. So sometimes I will put the R and B style into the wow. Chinese oh, song, nice. or the yeah. Chinese yeah. one into the English uh. sort of R and B style song. So I, and I so just kind of change. How them has out. reception been for this mixing something traditional with something a little bit mo more modern? Like. How has the reception been from people? I think people have been, uh, a lot of the uh, music musicians and uh, singers and uh, and I don't know how to say it in English, but like music people, people who work in music have in been- In the circle. Yes, yeah. in the circle. We have been trying to do this actually for many years now. And originally, I think a lot of people tried to translate Chinese lyrics into English to do this kind of sort of fusion. Um, but now, uh, I think they've succeeded in finding like sign up have you have you heard of jay joe like he is one of the i most, love jay yeah, joe but he was one of the <laughs> first he's my to, favorite yeah. singer yeah he's one of the first people to very very successfully blend these two styles so yes. now we we usually just go with his sort of flow and maybe have some different melodies but uh he's the perfect yeah example so we're i'm not the first person to do this it's just something that comes easier for me because i have some things uh you know some western sort of styles that just come very naturally to me uh and and then i also have the chinese styles which also come naturally because i grew up here so it's like wow. i don't know yeah it's, it's the perfect okay. it's, it's the perfect niche yeah. you know for me yeah. since that team you're so interested in the melodies and the songs how about we start a game and Whoa. present you more opportunities to Learn. get to know the song <laughs> because if <laughs> someone loses which probably could be maybe me, i will maybe, have to say yes Sure. Okay, so there is a game that uh, we prepared for today's live that is called uh, Who is the Old One? Uh, who is the Undercover? Okay, I will briefly in uh, do the introduction part. So at the beginning, four of us will get uh, a word, okay, uh -huh. related to the Winter Olympics. And uh, two civilians, let's say two people, will re receive the same word, and one undercover will get a similar word. And uh, one. Not, the, not, not the exactly same. the same Yeah, words, not the same, but similar. similar. And the one Mr. White will get a blank paper. 
Whoa. Okay. So do remember to keep your secret hidden from the others, but show it to our camera. Okay. And uh, for every so round, so we are not allowed to watch each other. Of other's course card. not. Mm. <laughs> of course, it's a game. It's a competition. Okay. Uh -huh. So for every round, each person will use a word or a phrase or a sentence to describe the word they receive, and uh, to disclose enough information, but not that obvious. Okay. Okay. Do not say the word out loud. Okay. So after each round, four players will wo vote. Who they think is the undercover or Mr. White? Okay. Okay. So civilians win if they eliminate all the undercover and Mr. White, and the impostors win if they survive until one civilian is left. So basically, it's a game of lying. Yes. Okay. It's a game of um, a game a competition. <laughs> okay. And also a teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Okay. So the punish. But we're also working against each other. But there would be two civilians. But we don't know who they are. Yeah. Trying to find. Exactly. Okay. Trying to let's find. Play. Yeah. Let's play. Let's, let's play. Let's play. Can we okay. get? Welcome our director. Oh, the director okay. is not even giving me the. <laughs> she, she doesn't <laughs> trust. Okay. Okay. Take a look yourself. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. How about we show it to the camera one by one? Sure. Uh, from the side. From the side. First, okay. And we don't look. Yeah, don't no, look. No. Yeah, don't look. Of course not. <laughs> I already saw your card. <laughs> Did you? Really? Yeah, so you can just tell me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. mind games have begun. Yeah. Okay, I've shown mine. It's your mine. turn. Okay, That's I'll your show. Turn. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. So keep your mouth the word to me. <laughs> it's hard not to watch, I have to admit. I know. I'm trying my best. Uh, okay. <laughs> cool. I'll it's wait. your turn. It's my turn. Yeah. yeah, okay, so please come on, man, to the right. I can, I can see the monitor, but I didn't see the word. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can see the monitor too. <laughs> don't look, don't look. Oh, you guys are I can't read it cheats. though, I have terrible eyesight. Please don't look at mine. It's my turn, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This reminds me of a movie where that like um, Sandra Bullock movie. Uh -huh. ca uh, Bird Cage, where like she, she's not allowed to look. And? Otherwise there's monsters outside. Oh. And she... Uh -huh. and okay. Is that okay? Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So which part? Which I think is oh God, for so the nervous. left side or the say. right side to start? At uh, the left side. <laughs> the left side. Uh, oh, that's me. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's your turn to start your description. Um. Okay. Um. <laughs> Why do you have to watch your card when you have a blank card like this? They're yeah. <laughs> They're standing. They're standing. Standing. Oh, really? Yeah. Chanjo. Okay. Oh, so you don't have the same card, that's it? So it's definitely not sledding. Ha ha ha. Is I that I what forgot. you're doing? I forgot my word. <laughs> oh. Maybe oh, you can word. Never know. Okay, you finish? I am done. Standing. That's, that's not a lot of details out there. Okay, so for these, e uh, I should say, all of ours are winter sports activities, right? Oh, really? Don't oh, 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 she's deflecting. Well, well, Look wait a at minute. that. There's so a white I can card. smell. No. You need to be specific, but not that specific. Uh, Everyone uh, is standing. No, 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 no. L less well, talking and more hey, hey, hey. describing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Uh, it's she's it's trying to <laughs> yeah, she's win she's time. Yeah, she's a white card. So, yeah. I like, totally I like the venue for this activity. And it's a newly built uh, venue. Uh -huh. uh huh. Okay, what about you? I would say, let me check again. Snow. You're holding it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said snow. It's snow. because it's a white card. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> like, it, yeah. it might be white. <laughs> Winter. Call yeah. me Mister. Okay, you're great. You're great. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, what did you so say? Snow. <laughs> oh, you said snow. snow. Eat, yes. I have one. It's okay. Perfect. Let's. We mentioned it since the start of this program. Oh, it was mentioned in our conversation. We we mentioned a lot of sports. Yes, we did, but it. I can be as vague as I want. I don't have to be specific. <laughs> okay. It mentioned was mentioned in true. this room yeah. today. Voting yes. time? Uh -huh. we, sh we should vote. Yeah. yeah. So okay. one, two, three, and we vote for the for the, for the the player. All together? All together. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. So first we vote for who is civilian or who is... Uh, who do you think is, is the old one? The old one. So it's Not either the white one, right? Uncover it could be an or undercover be the or the, uh, uh, the one with a blank. Mm -hmm. So anyone uh, okay. who... Yeah. Anyone okay. who feels suspicious. Mm -hmm. They feel okay. Yeah. And I know exactly who. I know who feels very suspicious yeah. right now. Okay. Okay. So one. One. Two. two three. three.
<laughs> that was fast. Okay. I'm You're so. Are you yes, sure, guys? Leave your card. Leave your card. Leave your card. Yeah. Leave your yeah, card. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. You might regret it because that's. Remember, that's my first oh, time. This is so nervous. Okay. Yeah. So, so we. Right there's another round. Oh uh, yeah, right? because there's one more yeah, to go. Three, three of us. Okay. So, we have. Okay, we have to give more clues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's hard, <laughs> or it's a blank one, and it, you it are could trying be to make it up. Um, they wear, like, they don't wear loose clothes. It's very tight-fitting clothes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's my clue. Mm, I think we for for this activity for this event there will be two players for each round okay um two players the time for each the round. time the length the length of time is very important mhm mm mm. the time yes the time matters the time it takes to complete the event is very important okay Okay. That's interesting. I know who's out. I know who's the wrong one. I know. <laughs> okay. Should we vote? I, I know yeah. as well, to you be know honest. As well. yes. Should we vote? But you Can don't get vote? to vote now. No, I know. he doesn't. That's he why just needs I'm to be quiet. Okay. I'm happy. Um, <laughs> I think we could vote. Okay. Yeah. One, oh my God. Two, two, three. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I that think you and well I have done, the same one. Well done, guys. <laughs> really? I'm totally positive. Do we have, we have the same one? Now? It's we're, we totally won. Who is the, who we is won. the winner? We did. They, we won. Yes, we're we the civilians. We won. We won. Yes, we won. I, I think She's so. the other one out. I He's the blank I, yeah, one. I think that you're you're not. Okay. okay. I think you're not telling the truth. Yeah. See, it's oh, it's actually almost the same. Yeah, we're the same. So yeah. We did yes, win. Yes, I yes. just thought. Oh. Yeah. See, we have more people, and she said there's only exactly. two, so that, I knew she was different. That was her giveaway. Yeah. And I thought maybe she I had like. I know, I know your word. I know your word. But I okay. thought I think I'm the civilian. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. well done, guys. We well won. done. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, it's it's well deserved. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. The, uh, the losers. Oh, no. Meanwhile. The losers. Meanwhile. Let's move on to the next part. Oh yes, <laughs> <Okay>. please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's welcome to the next part. What is the next part? Well, the director is. C calling us for the punishment. The punishment. I okay, yeah, exactly. The next part. Oh. So the losers need to sing a song, right? That's it. Okay. You well, we need to learn first. Yeah. How about yeah, teacher? Annie, okay, teacher. So I just, not only I is she like, the, the winner, like she's also the teacher. I feel like this is not super fair. Yeah, because I won, but then I still have to like, sing, yeah. exactly. you know, work. So please learn this very fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's not gonna um, be easy. Right. <laughs> you have two minutes. Okay, so this song is called Qingsi. It's one of my favorite. Um, songs that mm -hmm. I ha was lucky enough to uh, have a version, <coughs> my own version of. Um, originally, this is done in a low voice and then a high voice, but we're not going to do that because that's going to take forever to. Can you demonstrate? Do. Just for the sake of. Just okay. You have to change oh my the God. I can't do this. Anyway, it's too they early wouldn't in the morning. Able okay. yeah, they wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, easy. the melody is pretty simple. It's. Let's well, just do two those. Ooh, yeah, How about we say it together? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it. But like the way she did it was just like it just gave me the so chills. Hard. Oh, yeah. Is that bad? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's At all. It is that morning. good. Uh, this is yeah. It's actually done in a really. I, I mean, can big I do voice, something but we won't else? Do that today. Than sing? No. No. no? Okay, okay, let's do it. Okay. From the top, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Let's do that first. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's a punishment for who? No. Because uh, okay, okay, I to listen to that. Uh, it's, uh, it's stop the train. I want to get off now. <laughs> it's more of a punishment for what those who it? actually won because I have to I sit know. down and listen to it, and she has to teach you yes. guys. And this is oh my god. We were saying in real low voice and together with Annie and finish this part. How about okay. that? Right. Or, or we could change it instead of you guys learning the song. You can try to. 
tell me what it means. You can tell you can translate or uh, act out the lyrics for everyone. <laughs> okay, you you do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> for the uh. translation part <laughs> of the lyrics as our punishment, uh, it's like the Lord couldn't see the the maid to the Then, dancing. Yes, and uh, neither can he. Hear the sound of the drums and the other instrument, and no, <laughs> no. <laughs> she's not happy. That's not what it how, means at all. how dare you botch it? But I uh, know. But that would, if I was reading it like this, yes, if I would think that's what it meant. But because it stops, it's jun bu jian. It means when he's not there, jiu jian bu dao. Ah, jun bu jian, he is not there. Ah, right? Okay. So they not show there. they they miss each other. Right. Yeah, she is waiting for him and like Ooh. always waiting. So the thing of the song is like, okay, he's gone. So she dances, she does this, she does that, plays the instrument. But in the end, uh, she spends her whole life waiting, and he never returns. It's oh. actually a very sad song, but oh. it's a beautiful, mm -hmm. um, a beautiful idea. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Thanks from sad. Thank you. <laughs> from sad <laughs> moments, so let's move on to something a little bit more <laughs> yes, cheerful. Let's, let's move on to the cheerful Olympics. Um, the warmth. Oh, yeah. Of <laughs> the worms. <laughs> the bait, not the worms. The What? the friendship part. The, you the mean? warmth. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The so we have another guest online, right? Yes. We have another guest online. I think uh, we are actually arriving at the Beijing Qinghe Station. Whoa. So we're really happy to have Zhou Pei Ling. Sorry, Zhou Pei Ling from BLCU, Beijing Language and Cultural University, and uh, who is now a volunteer at the National Speed Skating Oval. Hi, Pei Lin. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello. I, I removed this one. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 huh. okay. Hello. So uh, yeah, Hello. sorry. Uh, so Peiling, so please shortly brief introduction yourself. Do a brief, okay. short brief introduction. Okay, hello, my name is Zhou Peiling from Beijing Language and Culture University. I'm a graduate student major in English translation. I'm responsible for contacting sports teams as a volunteer of language service in National Speed Skating Oval. Yes. So can I ask you a question? Why did you decide to become yes. a volunteer at the Beijing 2022 Olympics? Uh, sorry, the, the, the net is very poor. Can, uh, oh, could I, please, I'm please asking please. why did you decide to become a volunteer at the Olympics? Uh, okay, because, well, to be honest, before the Winter I Olympics, I didn't know much about the speed skating, the, uh, these events, oh these disciplines. But I think uh, in as being a volunteer of Beijing 2022, it actually let me know the charm of the sports so i was very proud of it okay so i'm back oh you're back okay <laughs> thank you so uh Pei Ling, well, what are the stories that you would like to share with us about your interactions with the athletes because we know that you are having uh, like interactions with many athletes from different countries so are there stories that you would like to share with us Uh, okay, so speaking of some impressive moments or spe special memories, I'd like to share my communications with Team Canada. So as a liaison of Team Canada, the first memory of them is when I first came to Fountain and tended to uh, show them around the Oval. Well, they lined up and patiently wait and give me so as the first time of being liaison of sports team, I think this was a very a good start. And another special moment with Team Canada is the day of our Chinese New Year's Eve to introduce our traditional Chinese New Year and share happiness wishes. So I made a greeting card for the team. And one of the coaches, uh, he actually founded me at the information desk, which I still don't know how he found me and remembered my face, my name in sh such a short period of time. So he found me and gave me a shiny little pin. So this one is he gave he gave it to me the pin of Team Canada as the newest present. So this was uh, the very, very first time for me not spending uh, the spring festival with my family. So everything is totally different. But on that day or at that moment, I felt being loved and well treated. So I could say uh, this pin was one of the best presents I've ever received. 
And talking about pins, I think that is the most interesting thing happened between me and the sports teams. I use team, I use pins of my school, my volunteer pins, and also Bing Dun Dun pins. You know, Bing Dun Dun pins were the most popular ones among the athletes. I use my pins to trade with them. And as you can see, so these pins, they are all from Team Canada, and they call me the master, uh, pin master of Team Canada, yes. And You're gonna catch this them one, all. <laughs> yes, yes. And these one are from Team Czech, and the, the white cat and the, the black bear are from Team AOC. Team Austria, Team Netherlands, yeah, Team Netherlands, they also give me uh, the wooden shoes, very beautiful. So I think uh, these pins were the bridges uh, connected between me and athletes, and I think that is the most interesting thing happened between us, yes. Okay, thank you so much, Paley, and I'm really jealous of our volunteers here because they are have a, a lot of pings on their <laughs> on their like necks around their necks, and that is so wonderful. And which it not just represent for the gifts exchanges, but it's more like we are making new friends, yeah, right? right? We are new, knowing new yeah. cultures, and we are making new friends. And thank you so much, and uh, we'll head to you later of the live. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so okay. much. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The, bye. There was a Thank lot you. of there was a lot of focus on volunteers during the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. You usually you don't you don't see people talking much about them because you, it's it's usually about the athletes, about the performers. Yeah. But like, there's been a lot of stories about volunteers in China. I know that there's a lot of athletes who went yes. online to speak about you know how the volunteers have made them feel special have made them feel welcome you know one of the prime examples about this is the american athlete tessa uh -huh. maud um she's 18 maud. years old and uh during the opening ceremony uh, after that she uh made a tiktok about how while they were walking into uh, the arena and then she said ni hao to one of the volunteers and then he replied to her welcome to china and she made a tiktok that like really made a big buzz mm -hmm. um, about how she felt welcomed and how she felt like touched by uh, the hospitality of this person and then the the internet somehow found that person and mm -hmm. then he wow. wrote her um, a letter, a letter. Yes. yeah he's a student at Tsinghua University and so he wrote her a letter telling her that if she comes again um, he would love to show her around and so smart move yeah <laughs> and then you're seeing that um, this volunteer was telling us about all the pins that she's exchanged with the athletes so it's quite nice to see that you know they're Yes, there are sports, but at the same time, there's also these social interactions and human-to-human yes. -human exchanges. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I think there is another story that previously you leave us to now. Yeah, yeah. You, uh -huh. you yeah. mentioned a little <laughs> so bit. Could you please shortly uh, like introduce that? Uh, share yeah, with you, us. you mean the story between athletes, like between a Gu Ai Lin yes, and the and French, a French athlete. athlete? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, during... Tesla. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, very good pronunciation <laughs> as well. Maxi. So it was during the big air competition and Tesla, the, well, everyone, to be honest, was waiting Tesla the, to, to win the competition because she, she was number one in the world. And she was the only one to be able to do a special figure. I, I forgot the name of his figure, but it's like a, a 1,620 Yeah, they're special. all numbers usually, yes. yeah. And she was the only, only one to be able to do that. Um, usually in this uh, competition you have three shots, three steps. And Tesla Do was the number one in the first, number one in number two. And number three, her she was one. always sure that she was going to yeah, be the her number last one. Her was yeah. not that good. fortunate. Yeah. And Gu Ailin did something really... I mean, Gu Ailin for me, she really does have the heart of a champion. Because in order to be number one, she had to do it all. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, she tried a really amazing move that she never tried during competition, mm. but only during training. Mm -hmm. And she did it perfectly. She totally yeah. stabil stabilized herself and, and she won from right. 0 0.75 points. And what I really loved about her attitude, when she saw the French woman, when she saw that she was crying, like, oh my goodness. So Because she I, came in second. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I'm not, and Gu Ailin, and not only <laughs> Gu Ailin, but the, the number th uh, three as well. The bronze from, medalist. Yeah, yeah. from Switzerland. They both came to the French woman 
and they hug, hug each other. Yeah, I, I remember. That like, was really amazing. I exactly remember this moment. Mm. But like, there's a lot of similar moments throughout the competition that we've seen where you've had either people who didn't make it to the podium congratulating athletes who made it or... Actually, you know, these, these games, that sport, they are so dangerous. Most of athletes, they really congratulate each other. When we succeed an amazing move, all everyone is happy for you because you did an amazing job and they know by themselves how hard it is to train. Them. I think yes. that's the thing, like everyone thinks like we, the viewers, we watch it from television at home and we're like, okay, they've done good, they've done bad. It's easy for us to criticize, but we don't know the amount of pressure yeah. and the hard yeah. work mm -hmm. yes. that they've had to put into you know, uh, their training so they can get to the Olympics. Yes. Yeah. So. so whether you are rivals, whether you are competitors, whether you are teammates, it is the like sportsmanship, it is the spirit, it is the respect that yes. matters in one of the most important uh, sports event in the world. Like you're competitors, you're not enemies, of right? Yeah. Like so. Yeah, and the, actually the stress that they're under in, co in competition, it's a very uniting thing because it's mm -hmm. almost like going through battle together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you're, you might be competing, but you're both experiencing the same kind of terror and excitement and everything. So it's, it becomes a very uniting experience, even for two weeks, just because you're under so much pressure it can create lifetime long friends. Yes, it's, it's very, it's exactly. very Heart, special. heartwarming yeah. to, to see such yeah. a... And only one time every, you know, four years. So it's, I think actually in some ways I kind of envy them getting to all compete <laughs> together, no matter where they're from. And they just, they can get united and make these friends. It's yeah. wonderful, okay. it's really wonderful. So there are some like comments online sure. from our audiences that Let's I hear. would like to share with you guys. Uh, one audience from YouTube said, thank you Beijing for organizing the Winter Games under pandemic with no major outbreak and a good job well done and uh, also uh, China is still young in certain winter sports but we will see more of China athletes in the near future and also I think this one is from Chi in Chinese that uh, uh, from our WeChat channel said that I really like any song I really <laughs> like Xiao Hu song yeah. yeah and uh, also from WeChat channel is the first time watching the English version of who is the undercover <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that's true. It's the first time I played it too. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for keeping us together during the live, and thank you for the comments. Okay, and also since we are now already at uh, the Qingke Station, arrived. yeah, arrived in Qingke Station, and uh, I think great pleasure with all of our guests today in this special studio, and uh, we will say, I think. No, before we say goodbye. Yeah. No. No, we're not yeah. going to go by before we hear another song. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my yes. God. yes, exactly. Of course. What did you think? Like, <laughs> no. It, it's just <laughs> like, no. No, See, I feel like okay. this is okay. another one. The, we were just talking about this working together in sportsmanship. So I think this needs to be a joint venture. And I'm sure you guys know this song because it's the theme song for the. Oh. You Let's know, do this. I, mean, I know so the English one. I don't <laughs> okay. know the Chinese one, but we, well, we could. We could. Oh, right. But so I think the audience would, would like to hear you because you're the one who has <laughs> the great vocals. No, I, not in the morning. I don't. But okay, let's do. I'll do a verse in. I'll do the Chinese one, and mm -hmm. then um, maybe you guys know, for example, the French or some uh, other language. I can. I follow in Chinese. Start it off. Okay. Yeah. Let's just sing it together. I'll All just right. lip sync. Uh, one, okay. two, three. 我们都需要爱，大家把手都牵起来。Together for a shared future, each Eli, each Shan Wei Lai, Woman Do Yong Yo I, Lai Basoy Woman Do. Okay, that's the idea you guys do it. I like it. I like it. Okay, that that did not go as planned, but. We'll just take it. Yeah, it, I like it. It is what, what it is. What was I supposed to do? I felt like I, they told me that you guys were going to, you know, pick up and start singing your own. Oh, they told me that you were going to be standing and, like, singing it. Who, for, That's those, what I was told. for those who want to hear more from Xiao Hu, for more from Annie, please check her, her, uh, yes. her cut oh, yes, for more uh, wonderful melodies and wonderful songs. Okay? Okay, now we can, now we can wrap <laughs> things up. Okay. okay. Um... Great, thanks. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. We will be back tomorrow, but we, before we say a final goodbye, we're always coming back, like it's like we never yeah. want to leave. Um, we'll leave you with <laughs> a schedule for the games of today. See what's happening on February 18 at the Beijing 2022. And me and Jessica will see you next time. Bye.
Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Four gold medals will be on offer on February 18th, starting with women's free ski half-pipe final. And China's teenager sensation Gu Ailin will be vying for her third medal in her last event of Beijing 2022. In the afternoon, the final runs of men's skis cross will be contested at Genting Snow Park. Speed skating men's 1,000 meters is scheduled at 1630 at the Ice Ribbon. And 22-year-old China's rising star Nin Zhongyan will be setting his eye on a podium finish. The last goal of the day will be coming from biathlon men's 15km mass start, during which China's Cheng Fengming, the first host nation's athlete who has qualified for the event in 15 years, will challenge himself and seek a further breakthrough. Way to go.